Welcome back to Transcriber from Reddit. Today's topic comes from a website, healthline.com, and it is a website read. The article I will be reading is titled, Why the, quote, husband stitch, end quote, isn't just a horrifying childbirth myth. This was written by Katie, excuse me, by Carrie Murphy, and it was fact-checked by Jennifer Chesek, MSJ, updated on October 25th, 2023. When I say fact-checked by Jennifer Chesek, here we see pop up on the screen a little blurb that says, Jennifer Chesek, spelled C-H-E-S-A-K, is a medical journalist for several national publications, a writing instructor, and a freelance book editor. She earned her Master of Science in Journalism. Now, to get back to the article, I will read through it first, and then I will offer my commentary in, around, or after the article. I begin reading. The husband stitch, that is in quotes, or quote, daddy stitch, end quote, is an outdated medical practice involving an extra stitch during vaginal repair following childbirth. It's considered unethical, objectifying, and medically unnecessary. Below that is an image where we see a surgeon's hand posed largely in the background, finishing up a stitch, and a woman's head covered by her two hands, her face completely obscured. Below that are the following bullet points. First, vaginal tearing during childbirth is common, painful, and depending on severity, is treated with stitches. Second point, when repairing episiotomies or tearing from birth, some doctors put in an extra stitch, quote, for daddy, end quote. Third point, known as the, quote, husband stitch, end quote, or, quote, daddy stitch, end quote, experts say the practice is unethical and contributes to the objectification of women's bodies. That ends the bullet points. I'm going to continue to the article. Quote, yeah, let's go ahead and add in another stitch so we can make sure this is nice and tight, end quote. Sarah Harkins, family doctor, said to her husband moments after she'd given birth to her daughter in 2005. Quote, I was so out of it physically, emotionally, and mentally. The doctor said it to him, not to me. I was just lying there like a lump, end quote, remembers Harkins a New Orleans-based doula and lactation counselor. Following a traumatic induction of labor, an epidural placed too late for relief, and a forceful extraction of her baby, Harkins was horrified to realize that the family doctor she'd carefully chosen to attend her birth was giving her a, quote, husband stitch, end quote. A husband stitch, or daddy stitch, is an extra stitch given during the repair process, known as an episiotomy, following a vaginal birth. The extra stitch supposedly tightens the vagina, excuse me, vagina, to increase sexual pleasure for a male partner. The husband stitch has a long, complicated, and problematic history, and is now considered medical malpractice. The idea of the husband stitch has gained some recent attention following the publication of Carmen Maria Machado's story, quote, The Husband Stitch, end quote, and the responses to it. Is it a myth? A hurtful joke? An urban legend? A combination of hearsay, misunderstanding, and chauvinist attitudes? To some, the very idea of a husband stitch is a silly notion, not at all based in the reality of care. For many birthing people, here, I will interject, I believe the author means to say biological women. The extra stitch was very real despite that it is becoming obsolete. 
No scientific studies show how many women have been affected by the husband stitch in the past century, parentheses, or longer, end parentheses. Nor is there a clear method for evaluating its prevalence. Section. Birthing people share their, quote, husband stitch, end quote, stories. The proof that the, quote, husband stitch, end quote, is much more than a childbirth myth is in women's words, or sometimes it's sewn into their bodies. These women have shared their stories as anecdotes, whispered as warnings. Angela Sanford, a 36-year-old mom from Fort Mill, South Carolina, received a husband stitch when she gave birth to her first child in 2008. She didn't find out until five years later, after years of, quote, excruciating, end quote, pain during sex. Link here. At an appointment for a pap smear with a nurse midwife she'd never seen before, Sanford said that the first question the midwife asked her during her exam was, quote, who stitched you up after your first birth, end quote. Quote, I explained, and she said, quote, this is not right, end quote. I just started crying, saying, quote, can you tell me what's wrong, because I know something is not right, end quote, Sanford continued. Quote, and that's the first time I've ever heard the term husband stitch, end quote. Sanford's midwife felt that she'd been stitched, quote, too tight, end quote, by the hospitalist who had managed her first delivery, an unmedicated birth with two hours of doctor-coached pushing and a fourth-degree tear. Quote, he gave you what some people call a husband stitch, end quote. Sanford recalled the midwife telling her. Quote, I couldn't connect in my mind why it would be called that. My midwife said, quote, they think that some men find it more pleasurable, she recalled. Quote, my husband has been worried about me and fearful of hurting me. He would never have asked for this, end quote. Here we have a quote featured in the article that reads as follows. The fact that there is even a practice called a husband stitch is a perfect example of the intersection of the objectification of women's bodies and healthcare, end quote. Stephanie Tillman, a certified nurse midwife. Next section, the history of episiotomies from popular to discouraged. For Stephanie Tillman, CNM, a certified nurse midwife at the University of Illinois at Chicago and blogger at the Feminist Midwife, link here. The very idea of the husband stitch represents the persistent misogyny inherent in medical care. Quote, the fact that there is even a practice called the husband stitch is a perfect example of the intersection of the objectification of women's bodies and health care. As much as we try to remove the sexualization of women from appropriate obstetric care, of course the patriarchy is going to find its way in there, end quote, Tillman told Healthline. What do you do when you're confronted with the patriarchy just after giving birth? Harkins, 37, remembers how she laughed at her doctor's statement at the thought of the, quote, old crusty army doctor, end quote, overstitching her in order to give her husband more pleasure. Quote, I couldn't even process, parentheses, it, end parentheses, but I kind of laughed. Like, what else do you do when someone says that? I had just had a baby. I didn't think much about it because the whole birth experience was so traumatizing link here. But now that I think about it differently, the implications of that are just crazy, end quote. Husband stitches may have been more common when episiotomies were routine during vaginal birth. An episiotomy is a surgical cut made in the perineum, the area between the vagina and the anus, usually to widen the vagina to hasten birth. From about the 1920s forward, the popular medical belief was that an episiotomy made a cleaner cut that would be easier to repair and heal better. The logic was also that getting an episiotomy would prevent a worse perineal tear. Tears during vaginal birth are graded from first to fourth degree. Side note, that sounds very painful. And given that time period, I can understand that logic. It's horrifying now, 
but that was the 1920s. I continue reading. Quote, people were taught in the 50s and 60s that routine episiotomy was good for the woman. End quote. Dr. Robert, excuse me, Dr. Robert Barbieri, spelled B-A-R-B-I-E-R-I, Chair of Obstetrics and Gynecology and Reproductive Biology at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, told the Huffington Post. Quote, what they thought is if, excuse me, is that if they did a routine episiotomy, they'd have a chance to repair it and that during the repair, they could actually create a better perineum than if they hadn't done it. The idea, parentheses, was, end parentheses, that we could, quote, tighten things up, end quote, end overall quote. It's estimated, linked here, that over 60% of women experienced episiotomies in the United States by 1983. But starting in the 1980s, high-quality research on episiotomies was released, demonstrating that routine episiotomies caused the very issues they were thought to prevent, leaving many women with more severe tissue trauma and other negative long-term outcomes, including painful intercourse. In 2005, a systematic review in the Journal of the American Medical Association, linked here, found no benefit to routine episiotomy use. A 2017 Cochrane review, linked here, quote, could not identify any benefits of routine episiotomy for the baby or the mother, end quote. In 2016, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, parentheses, ACOG, and parentheses, recommended, linked here, that clinicians, quote, prevent and manage, end quote, delivery lacerations through strategies like massage and warm compresses, rather than making cuts on the perineum. Next section, episiotomies decreasing in recent decades. The new guidelines for episiotomies have impacted delivery in the U.S., in 2012, only 12% of births involved an episiotomy, linked here, down from 33% in 2002. Episiotomies still happen and can be clinically indicated in some situations, like when a vacuum or forceps are needed. Often, though, the decision about whether to do them comes down to training, preference, and comfort of the obstetric provider. Quote, there are still providers who do it routinely and they, for whatever reason, think it's a cleaner and better approach for people, despite all of the research otherwise. They practice how they want to, end quote, Tillman contended. Quote, essentially, it's a form of power over women's bodies to say, medical management can do this the right way and your body can't, end quote. Research supports this too. A 2015 study in the Journal of Maternal Fetal and Neonatal Medicine, linked here, found that, quote, the attending provider adds a significant independent effect to the episiotomy risk model, end quote. In the U.S., there is substantial variation in episiotomy rates based on geographic location, hospital, and even the type of insurance the patient has. Side note. Having experienced multiple different kinds of insurances, I don't blame anyone for not wanting to undergo any kind of pregnancy or childbirth, considering how much tens of thousands of dollars you'll probably owe at the end of it. I continue reading. White women were also found to be more likely to receive an episiotomy than black women, according to a 2015 research letter in the Journal of the American Medical Association linked here. Another study, linked here, looking at the use of routine episiotomies in Cambodia, found that the belief that, quote, women would be able to have a tighter and prettier vagina, end quote, was a reason given by providers for routine episiotomy. For some people, it's not their medical situation that will decide whether their genital tissue is cut while giving birth but social and cultural variables well beyond their control or even knowledge. Here we have another featured quote. 
I felt betrayed because something unnecessary was done to my body that I didn't ask for. End quote. Angela Sanford, who was given a, quote, husband stitch, end quote, after giving birth in 2008. Next section. Lasting pain from the extra stitch. Regardless of whether a tear happens on its own or as a result of an episiotomy, it's impossible to make a vagina tighter with stitching, according to Dr. Chisana Cooper at Nobly GYN in Birmingham, Alabama. Linked here. Quote, a, quote, husband stitch, end quote, would not affect overall vaginal tone as this has much more to do with pelvic floor strength and integrity than with introitus, parentheses, opening and parentheses, size, end quote, Cooper explained. It is possible, however, to create a tightness on the perineum and outer vulva with stitching, although it's debatable if sexual partners can feel it or not. Perhaps the husband stitch is a holdover from a time before doctors understood vaginal tone and believed they were returning women to prime sexual function after birth. Today, the goal of a vaginal repair is not to tighten the vulva or vagina, but to bring the skin back together enough to facilitate the body's own healing process. In the heady hubbub after birth, it's not uncommon for women to feel totally out of the loop in regards to what's going on near their vulva. Although the onus is on the provider to get clear consent and to explain what is necessary for the repair, women may not pay close attention or remember how they were stitched until much later, when pain or other issues occur. Quote, I was just happy that it, parentheses, giving birth, and parentheses, was over, end quote, Harkins said. In the moment, this is in quotes, in the moment, I wouldn't have used the word violated because my brain just couldn't process violation at the time. Now that I've had time to process, I have a clear sense of what I went through and what was done to me, the injustice, to wound me in my privates at a time when I was most vulnerable." In Lamarck, Texas, mother Tamara Williams, 27, found out she'd been given a husband stitch after her 2015 birth when her boyfriend mentioned it. He thought she'd heard the birth center midwife say, quote, she'd throw in an extra stitch for him, end quote, linking. He didn't know what to say or do when the statement was made, and Williams was on such a, quote, baby high, end quote, she has no memory of it. But knowing it was done to her is hurtful, despite the good relationship she still maintains with her midwife. Williams said she experiences continued pain during sex, even after giving birth to another child. Next section. Moving beyond the, quote, husband stitch, end quote. Although both Harkins and Sanford felt violated by their husband stitches and suffered pain and dysfunction as a result, both women also express a desire to give their providers the benefit of the doubt in regards to the care they received, perhaps demonstrating the profound power differential in the birthing room and patients' strong desire to continue to trust their providers. Quote, Part of me wonders if he did it on purpose or not. How hard is it to do it too tight? Maybe it's an easy mistake to make. I'm not a vagina expert. I'm an optimist, so I try to think the best of what they intended, end quote, Sanford said. But with the husband stitch, it's complicated to know what was needed, what was intended, and whether a postpartum body is the subject of a joke or a procedure. Neither Cooper nor Tillman have ever seen another provider put in an unnecessary stitch, although Cooper said she has heard, quote, husbands ask for an, quote, extra stitch for him, end quote, when his wife's perineum was being repaired, end quote. She finds the ethical implications of a maternity care provider ever doing one distasteful. Quote, an OBGYN should be there for, parentheses, there, and parentheses, patient, and not for th- a third party's interests. We serve women first and foremost. 
an, quote, extra stitch, end quote, goes against surgical principles of healing, end quote, Cooper stated. Although it has and likely still does happen occasionally, the practice of the husband's stitch is rare and hopefully getting rarer in American birth spaces. It's possible the push for care to become more evidence-based will lead the excuse me, will lead to the husband stitch dying out completely. Whatever it is, an outdated medical practice and a vanishing rarity, it is a traumatic reality Angela Sanford still lives with. Quote, I felt betrayed because something unnecessary was done to my body that I didn't ask for, end quote, Angela said. Quote, it was a harmful decision made without my consent. That's not what you should get when you are in the hospital to have a baby, end quote. Next section, takeaway. The, quote, husband stitch, end quote, or, quote, daddy stitch, end quote, is an outdated medical practice involving an extra stitch during vaginal repair following childbirth. While many birthing people have been affected, the, quote, husband stitch, end quote, is considered medical malpractice, with incidences decreasing in recent decades. Experts say the extra stitch is unethical, medically unnecessary, and objectifies women's bodies. Below that article, below that ending of the article, we see multiple advertisements for LabCorp On Demand. Now, disclaimer here, I am not promoting LabCorp, and I am not at all being given money by them to say this. I've done a couple LabCorp tests previously. They're very simple, all done within less than 15 minutes, and the wait time for my tests were very, very low. In general, I got what I needed out of the tests. Now, please keep in mind that whatever money you spend on this is probably not going to be covered by insurance. And another thing to note, you'll have to drive to their location. It probably won't be conducted in a medical facility. But those are the only things to note about them. And overall, if you do have to get any kind of testing done, it is very simple to do it with LabCorp. I hope you enjoyed this transcription of this Healthline article. The whole reason I got into reading this article for you in the first place was because of my ever-growing desire to understand what the complications behind the birthing process are and what women face when they are in the process of giving birth. I myself have no plans to give birth to children in my lifetime and I have made every effort against giving birth to kids. Not because I don't value them Children are blessings, but they are blessings that need to be considered as blessings, which means taking the responsibility as an adult of saying, is this something that I am financially and mentally and emotionally prepared for, or am I not? And the more that I read articles like these, and the more research that I do, the more that it is apparent to me that there is no consideration for children as blessings in our current system and society. And there is no special care or consideration for the biological women that give birth to them especially considering that as of this stage, 
only biological women are able to give birth to these blessings. That concludes today's video. Please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, leaving a comment down below, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.